We look forward to sharing this box of joy with you. Some of our materials, mixing palette, watercolor paints by Lovebird Watercolor and watercolor paper. We also need two water bottles, a pencil, a paintbrush and an eraser. If you're right-handed, you can keep your pencil and eraser as well as your paintbrush on the right-hand side. And if you're left-handed, you can do it on the alternate side. I start off by drawing a long rectangle. And here we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of watercolor, which include watercolor consistencies. I've made about five equal or relatively equal squares or blocks out of the larger rectangle. A special characteristic of working with watercolors is that we are able to work in layers and this means that we can add one layer on top of another thereby creating a sort of transparency. It's always better to start off with a thinner consistency and then layer on thicker consistencies or added consistencies and we'll talk about that a little later when we work on our projects for now we're going to work with five different consistencies and these are the five consistencies as explained by watercolorist Jane Blundell we start off with a very very thick consistency and it's almost as though we have just used the pigment that's been directly lifted off the pigment dot. I start off with the flamingo pink and I wet my brush and lift off just enough pigment to put into the mixing palette. I add a little bit water just so that I can have enough consistency for the paint to spread. We hardly ever use watercolor at this really thick consistency, except perhaps when we're adding a little bit of detail. I then go on to wash my brush, lift up more pigment, and add a little water for a thinner consistency. It's always handy to keep a sheet of testing paper on the side. The first consistency we'd call cream consistency. Next, as we add a little bit of water, we see we have a slightly thinner consistency, which Jane Blundell talks about as being a milk consistency. And as with milk, you can't really see through it, so it is opaque, but yet it moves about freely. To this, I add a little more water, and as you notice, I'm adding water from the second clear jar. We mix uh, our paints with water from with clear water, and we wash our brush in another jar. I'm testing out my watercolor to try to get a thinner consistency than the milk, which would now be a coffee consistency. With the coffee consistency, there is some transparency because we can see the paper at the back. It also moves relatively smoothly. And we'll talk a little bit about just how much paint to use each time in a little while. I wash my brush out, dab it on the tissue, add a little more water because I want to get a consistency that is thinner than the coffee consistency. This next consistency is known as a tea consistency. And think about dipping or seeping a tea bag in some tea. You'd be able to see through it really well, so there's a lot of opacity. Yet you do get a fair sense of the color that's inside. Take a look at this water droplet that's moving along the square. And this is known as the water bead. And note how I try to evenly spread out the water bead so I don't have a huge collection of water building up at the end. However, I do land up with some at the end here. And what I do is dab my brush down so that I don't have a blob in the end. And it's called a thirsty brush. And I bring a thirsty brush to the block and suck up that little bit of water left over. I then wash out my brush. Take a little bit more clear water for mixing, 
and I dilute that down really well. The next consistency that I'm going to try to get is called a weak tea consistency. And think about it in a way where you take a tea bag on a string and just leave it for a few moments in some water where you just get a hint of the color, but not too much more. So starting off with the cream consistency, we hardly ever use it except for very fine detail. We go on to the milk consistency. Coffee consistency is usually a consistency that we use quite often. Tea consistency and a weak tea consistency. We now go on to talking about just how much water or paint to add. And I'll start off by thickening the paint that I was working with by adding a little more pigment from the pigment dot. Test that out a bit. Add a little more pigment to thicken it up. I want to use quite a bit of water or lift quite a bit of water up with my brush to give you an idea of what not to do. As you see, I'll try to spread the water bead out, but I still have a collection of water building up. So that's a bit too much water that's been lifted up. As this dries, what we'll find is some of the water pushes back on the dry part and we create a bloom. The next example is going to give you an idea of just the right amount of water to add. So I lift up the paint with my brush. I try to spread out the water bead and I see as I run out of paint I'll add a little more spreading out the water bead till the end. I might get a little bit of a collection so what I'll do is I'll wash my brush, dry it out and bring a thirsty brush to lift up that last little bit. the second one giving a better example of the right amount of paint to add to an area. Next I'm going to show you a technique that's known as creating a soft edge. We sometimes use hard edges and sometimes use soft edges. While it might seem complicated, all a soft edge is is a blended edge where you don't want a harsh ending to a line but you use a slightly blended ending. Note how I lift a certain amount of the paint from the mixing palette and I try to spread the water bead. The hard edge ends just there and there's a stark contrast between the painted and the unpainted edge. With the soft edge, I'll start in the same way, again working my water bead and only going over the area that was painted very quickly before it dries or else we'll get something known as streak streak formation. What I've done is wash the brush out and taken a slightly damp brush to the paper. I don't want a blob of water to drop off my brush so I dab it ever so slightly on the tissue and go over the edge in an attempt to create a softer edge more blended edge. Let's move on to our first project which is cupcake and macaroons. I start off by doing a very basic drawing. I draw a platform upon which to start and draw as you wish. You can go um, as detailed or as um, basic as you'd like. In terms of drawing details with watercolour, when you are using watercolour, try to keep away from drawing too many details with your pencil because you tend to sort of paint that in or colour that in. 
um, whereas if you do rough or broad outlines uh, you'll tend to use your paints a bit more with this project I this first project I didn't erase the graphite edges very much um, but it is possible to take your kneaded eraser which is the putty eraser that you see over there and sort of roll it once or twice over your drawing so that not too much pencil remains before you bring the paint to it because once you've brought the paint to it you can't erase the pencil that is underlying that so what I do is I draw a basic cupcake wrapper few macaroons on the side and as you see uh, my preference is to start with basic shapes so I see the macaroon largely as a sort of uh, oblong or oval shape and I draw that and from there I go on to do specifics some people prefer to draw contours at this point these mini macaroons to me look a little bit more like coffee beans but as the paint uh, meets the paper, we'll see that they look a lot more like the macaroons that they're supposed to. Again, don't spend too much time or focus too much attention on detail. I wash my brush out to make sure that I'm bringing a clean brush to my project. Start off by adding some clean water to my mixing palette. I lift some uh, paint or concentrated pigment from my paint dot or my pigment dot, lifting up the pure paint and putting it into the mixing palette. Again, I want to use my testing paper and I take clear water to thin out my consistency. We start off by doing a very flat basic first layer. As we said, we work with layers and the underlayer is usually thinner. We can always build up layers from here, but once you start with a very thick layer, it becomes difficult, if not impossible, to work on top of that. So I largely do a flat layer. Uh, we like to consider value, which is light and dark, and I'm imagining that the light would be shining on my composition from the right. So I have a right-sided light source, try to keep some highlights coming from the right. As you see, I left a spot clear, and what I do is soften the edges around that spot. Wash out my brush and I go on to choosing the forest trail green. I imagine that the macaroon I'm doing is a pistachio macaroon, definitely not an avocado macaroon. Starting with a coffee consistency, maybe coffee between coffee and tea, and I'll get the base layer in green. I want to create an area of highlight over there. What I did previously is I used a thirsty brush or dry brush to mop up some uh, areas of highlight but here I can take a tiny bit of tissue and just dab it slightly. I don't rub the tissue onto the page um, because the watercolor paper gets destroyed when I rub it so some slight dabbing and here while my uh, paint is still wet I try to move it around the shape washing my brush out and what I want to do is move around the composition because if I were to paint the macaroons that were very close to the green macaroon the colors would blend or run into each other so i am rather choosing to go back to the cupcake and do the base layer of the frosting i'd say that would maybe be a grape or bubblegum frosting and i use a tea or coffee consistency spreading it very evenly 
could leave some areas of highlight by lifting it up with a thirsty brush as I did or dab it a bit with a bit of tissue. In a similar way, I mix some of the coral reef in a coffee in a consistency that ranges between coffee and tea. I found that my consistency was too thick as I already placed it on the paper. So what I did before it started drying is I just took a damp brush to the macaroon and spread out the pigment that was already on the paper shows the importance of testing out your consistencies. I don't want to go into the third macaroon because I don't want the colors to run into each other. So what I want to do is move on to the cake part of the cupcake. And I want to try to get a sort of a cake color. I see with my color swatch that this would be using the flamingo pink and the yellow. see how far watercolor pigment or paint stretches and these six dots would last for a very long time. I take some of the sunshine yellow, wash out my brush, oh, add a little bit of more water first, wash out my brush, go on to getting the flamingo pink, add a bit more flamingo pink pigment, that out. Yeah, that looks like a cake cons um, cake color. And I go on to do a flat painting of that first layer. Again, consistency ranging between coffee and tea. Working the water bead around so it spreads out nicely. I can paint it back a little because the first part hasn't dried out yet. I take a thirsty brush to even it out a little, making sure that I'm not lifting pigment and paint off. I now go on to painting the third macaroon since the first two have dried. and I mix a slightly thicker consistency than the first purple that I used and here I'm gonna try to consider which areas would be slightly darker. I now want to work on the second layer of my cupcake wrapper and I mix up a thicker consistency of the blue so that would be between coffee and milk consistency and I consider where the darker areas are and if you look at the insides of the folds those are usually darker looking towards the base where less light falls that could be a bit darker and what the different layers do or what the thin and thick consistencies do is that they prevent the illustration from looking flat. Value or light and dark 
creates the illusion of depth so as i try to do this it appears that part of the wrapper is moving forward and part is moving back i keep my mind on what an overall highlight would be and we know that we are imagining a light source coming from the right it a little darker and i want to add this into the slightly darker areas even darker and what this is called is charging in so i charge paint in and i can only do this while the layer that i'm working with is still wet if the layer has started drying i tend to create blooms so charging in happens when i add new paint or pigment to an area that is still wet. I now want to put some finishing touches on my macarons. Now that they have dried, I can go on to adding another layer. And I try to get quite a thick consistency of the green. Again, considering where my shadow areas and where my highlights are. As I do the second layer, I leave a small area of highlight showing from the first area. I make a very, very thick consistency, almost a cream consistency, and add in some of those middle details. I follow a similar pattern with the coral reef colored macaroon. I don't cover the entire macaroon or the second layer with the coral reef paint. I remember to leave an area of highlight. As you see there, I took a thirsty brush and lifted some color out. That's one way of creating your highlight. Remember the second way was to slightly dab off a bit of the paint that we've laid down. Again, I take a cream consistency and do the middle part. The yellow macaroon doesn't show up as smoothly on the camera. Yellow is a color, doesn't have a great range when it comes to value. We can discuss that another time. I go back to my frosting layer to add a little bit more difference in value. If your illustration or painting is looking flat, try to vary the value or the light and dark areas. Keep note of where the shadows fall, where the darker areas are, where the highlights lie, and try to think of how you can replicate this using your watercolor paints. I now want to consider shadow area and I want to look for grey. Again using my colour swatch I see that some of the blue with some of the lavender would cross to give me a type of grey. I want to add a shadow because as it stands my cupcake and macaroon appear as though they are sort of floating. Shadow will anchor it. Again, I want to test my color and I place a bit of gray underneath my objects. I just remembered that my light source would be shining from the right. <laughs> 
So while the shadows are leaning to the left, they should actually be facing the right. What I do is I then try to soften the edges by washing my brush out and taking a damp brush. And I'm trying to move my shadow so that it can lean a little bit towards the left instead. I charge in some color right underneath the cupcake wrapper, underneath the macaroons, and as you see, it's slightly more anchored to the paper. And if you notice shadows aren't completely gray or black, they have a hint of color in them. And here what I do is take some of the color that meets the shadow and while my um, paint is still a bit wet, I charge in with a bit of color, I charge into the gray so that it's not a dull shadow but it has a hint of color in it. When I look at my composition, however, I feel that it looks a little bit bare. What I could have done in the beginning was to have added a background. I could still add a background. I decide to add a little bit more detail with a thicker consistency to the cupcake wrapper. I can either do this by layering on more layers of the same consistency, by using a thicker consistency in painting, or by adding a slightly different hue like we did earlier with the purple to the blue. Remember, all the while working your way around your composition so that colors that don't need to bleed into each other remain separate. I'm creating a slightly thicker consistency of the coral reef to work on the middle of that macaroon. Same with the yellow, could it be a lemon macaroon perhaps? I now go in to painting the edges just above the cupcake wrapper where there should be some shadow. I paint that with a slightly darker consistency and as you see it lifts the cake a little bit off the page so that it's not a flat illustration and we have some value variation. I prefer soft edges. I erase some of the pencil bits out and only once things are quite dry do I erase over the painting and because I find the composition to be a little bit empty I'll add some lettering. 
eraser and I gently roll it over the graphite so that I just have a light outline. I haven't completely erased it. I can still see the lettering. Now I use a very thick consistency, almost a cream consistency with which to do the lettering. And with this you've created your first basic watercolour painting. 